Hey guys, welcome to a new edition of TNA Making an Impact. It is me, 21 Maxwell, and today we have our February pay per view TNA Against All Odds. We've got an 18 segment show, hopefully, they can get a lot of storylines over to the next level and then start building on the road to our next pay per view and then the big one after that, which is, of course, lockdown. It's a good way away. I think it's a good um, eight weeks, I think we've got maybe even more than that to get there. So I'm really hoping we can get a strong pay-per-view here. Just keep building the company up and hopefully you know, see where we go from here. So we'll jump straight into the show. As I say, it's 18 segments. We'll explain it as it goes along. And as always, thanks for watching. So we ended up with 9,778 people at the Lacourist Centre in Philadelphia. We start the show, usual hype package you get before the show, pyrotechnics, etc. And we hype up our main event for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship between Fergal Devitt and EC3. Well, EC3 finally get the win over a champion who has been dominant so far, Fergal Devitt, and it's a B-77. He gets to show off their strong start, and it gets the crowd a little bit hotter. The TNA storyline for the championship has advanced with this segment. So a good start there, and we all know that's going to be our main event. Next up in our opening contest is a decent matchup which saw Drew Galloway defeat Magnus in a tables match in 1337 when Magnus was put through a table by Drew. So these have been kind of at it recently. There's not really been a clear winner between them. They did draw the last time they fought, but Drew gets the victory and that's a C plus 68. The match got the crowd hotter. Galloway with a 62, Magnus with a 66. The segments advanced this uh, storyline but lost heat. As I say, it was good to give Drew a victory here. Uh, only negative was his chemistry. It's a good win for him. As I say, this will be the end of the storyline between them. And a good win for the Scotsman over the Englishman, which couldn't happen at the football, unfortunately. Next up, in a decent matchup, Ricochet defeated Kenny Omega in 12 11 by pinfall with a fast roll up. Ricochet wins the X Division Championship. Uh, the note it hasn't given us here is that it was because of a botched interference by Adam Cole, although I'm pretty sure that was booked in if I look at my booking details. Um, not apparently I didn't click it okay in that, but uh, yeah, that was the plan anyway. So, Kenny Omega loses the championship because of Adam Cole not making the right save. He costs him the match here. It's a C61, the championship's the save is back on Ricochet, an in-ring performance of 62, Omega by 49. And the X Division storyline advances, although that should end with that. No skill improvements to comment upon, and only negative is the inconsistency of Kerry Omega. This leads to this segment where Adam Cole offers to shake the hand and apologise to Kenny Omega, but Kenny Omega refuses and decides to walk off. So it was a C plus 68 segment here. The performance of Adam Cole was good. Kenny Omega performed poorly in it. But as I say, it's going to be interesting what happens between these two going forward. Next up, it was a decent matchup that saw the Decay defeat Beer Money in a weapons match in 8.50 when Crazy Steve defeated James Storm by pinfall. The Decay make defence number two of the TNA World Tag Team titles. In terms of in-ring work, Bobby Roode was head and shoulders above everyone else. Very solid B-73 here. Rosemary did some good work at ringside. James Storm and Bobby Roode obviously with great chemistry. Great performance from Bobby Roode with the 84 performance. A disappointing 53 for James Storm. A 45 for Crazy Steve, who are continuing to build up. And the best solid as ever. A 75 again. Storyline advances, but this will probably be the end of that. A best is improving his technical skills. A few negatives there, mostly going to be for James Storm and Crazy Steve, but overall, pretty happy with that, although it didn't agree with the crowd. Eh, not matching their expectations. I still feel it was a good matchup. Obviously, with the decay, we want it to be a bit hardcore. And a uh, gimmick turn for Crazy Steve. And the emotional gim emotionless gimmick, sorry, has got an initial rating of average as he moves to that. But the decay continue on as champions. What next for Beer Money going forward? And it was about the hard great wrestling. And a decent reaction from the crowd, and it saw Shibata defeat both Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards in a triple threat match. 
In 1439, when Shibata defeated David Richards by pinfall, he makes the fourth defense of the TNA National Championship. You get B minus 77 here, which is very good, good matchup from these three. Eddie Edwards producing a 68, a 70 for Davey, and a 76 for Shibata. Uh, that storyline obviously ended just to give them something different. And we get, as I say, a good matchup out of them. No skill improvements, but a good victory for Shibata. Keeps his unbeaten run up. He hasn't been pinned. He's been knocked out, but he hasn't been pinned. And the two gimmick changes was obviously just for both of the Wolves, who are, both of them was come up as stale. So David Richards will change. He gets an above average dual sport superstar. And Eddie Edwards, likewise, above average is a dual sport superstar. So just a match up to give the Wolves something different. But Shibata retains, and he continues this path of destruction. The years on. Up next, we'll just get a hype video documenting the big feud we've had between Ali, Gil Kim, and the returning Jade against Sienna, Tanya, and Britannia Knight. So, obviously, we've been through the whole three on two shenanigans after Tanya debuted at the last pay per view, then Jade making a return, and obviously, a hype package includes the training of Ali. Try to get her better. So, it's an E plus 32, and it lost a bit of heat because of the lack of overness on some of the knockouts. But the matchup did okay, uh, and about the hard, decent wrestling. But didn't have much heat. Gil Kim, Ali, and Jade defeated Britannia Knight, Sienna, and Tanya. When Ali defeated Sienna by pinfall with a roll up in 10:38. And in terms of in ring work, Britannia was head and shoulders above everyone else. But it's good, it's how we build up a division here. A D plus 50 is a good start, it's still a long way to go. I recognise that. Uh, Ali getting better at gimmick though, Jade is not suited to hers, however she's got a strong connection with the young female demographic which really, who really liked her winning, so that's positive. So in terms of ratings, Jade with 50, Gil Kim for 50, 35 for Ali, 42 for Tanya, 50 for Sienna and a 62 for Britannia. It continues the storyline, gaining it a bit of heat. Um, again, it's just a case of building up the, the knockouts division, which might keep this going. But it'll be a bit longer. Tanya improves her rumble skills. And a few negatives there has to be expected. A lot of holding back, which is a shame, but overall, delighted with that. Next up, we've got Mike Bennett, who's got a promo. So C-55, he's hyping up that him and Brian Cage is gonna, are going to defeat Bobby Lashley, Rey Mysterio, and the tag team rematch coming up next. So a C-55, obviously they've been... A bit of a bane for Bobby Lashley and Mysterio. However, 50% owner of TNA, Brandy Runnels, books a Fatal 4-Way match. She says it's no longer a tag match, it's now a Fatal 4-Way. I did say in the last video we're looking to go that way. A D-Post 50 it continues the storyline, loses a bit of heat. And let's see how these four do in the matchup next. And it was a decent match, which saw Mike Bennett defeat Bobby Lashley, Brian Cage, and Rey Mysterio in 1732, when Mike Bennett defeated Rey Mysterio Jr. by pinfall with the photo finish. A C62 here, Mysterio with a 74, Lashley with a 72, Cage with a 48, and Bennett with a 52, so of course building them up. It advances the storyline and gains a bit of heat. We had to protect Rey and Lashley here, but a good win from Bennett. And I say he's someone we're hoping to, to really give a good push to in the future. Lashley improving technical skills, and obviously booking decisions is going to be a negative and a few inconsistencies there, but overall happy with that. As I say, it's all a case of just phasing one generation out and a new generation in. And after the match, Mike Bennett just goes mental, celebrating like he's, you know, he's won the matchup. He's just unbelievable that he's just won this matchup against the odds, uh, or he's basically stolen it, and that's a C-57. minus Next up, we've got Jay Lethal in the ring. This promo, not really what it says in the text there. It's more a case of he's just not got a match up tonight. You know, he's issuing an open challenge to take on any wrestler uh, in some sort of contest to give him a match up to keep him in good shape. Because he has a baby face, so it's not going to be like an arrogant one. Challenge was accepted, and it was a good match up that saw Jay Lethal defeat Akira Tozawa. And 1234 with a lethal combination. C plus 69. Jellyfo was held back by the chaotic, chaotic nature of the match, as was Tazawa. Uh, okay, I'm having to have a look and see why that is. 
Um, I've not had that note before. Tazawa sustained a class 3 fracture larynx. Larynx, I can't pronounce that. Uh, the overbooking of the match didn't sit out of the crowd. I need to look at that then and see where it was booked. So I booked it last night. Uh, Julie Fowler 72, Tazawa 68. So let's look at the, the road agent notes. Ah! I've clicked something wrong. I've went to click the all out for the great bout and I've accidentally thought this should be overbooked. So that's what's caused it to suffer. I feel if that isn't there, that's easily a B minus, probably a 73, 74, and I think that'll be penalised very highly. So a good match up there. Um, hopefully the injury was a result of the all out match, not the fact it was chaotic. But lethal wins, that's the main thing. A good performance, a good showing for Tazawa, and Julie Fowler improves performance skills. Yeah, overbooked is a negative. Mayhem in the match. Makes me feel like that would have been an easy 74, 75, B minus, maybe even a B. So you learn a lesson to double check what you're booking. Hopefully the injury isn't too bad to Tazawa. Next up and about they had some fantastic heat and great wrestling. Chris Jericho defeated Bram in a last man standing match in 14-10 when Bram could not beat the 10 count after a code breaker. A very solid B80. These two are bringing the best out of each other. I wanted to put Bram over. Jericho wasn't for having it, despite many road agent notes. So we decided we'll go with Jericho. And we'll build Bram up a bit more. A 75 from Jericho and a 68 from Bram. Just shows how good the feud's going when they can pull a B80. It continues the storyline. I think we'll probably have one more matchup between them going forward. But Bram improves technical and performance mat uh, skills here. And a few negatives for Jericho. Overall, I mean, they've been fantastic together and uh, a good match up there. Next, we've got our main event. So, we've got just Fergal Devitt saying, you know, how many opportunities does EC3 want? He's going to show tonight he's still the dominant champion that TNA needs and he's just going to keep put his best performances out there for the fans. Segment advanced the storyline, gained a bit of heat. That's a B plus 86. So, solid from Fergal. Matchup itself was exceptional. And Fergal Devitt defeated DC3 in 1914 by pinfall with a double knee gut buster, and he makes the fourth defence of the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Rating could have been a bit better as a B-75. A bit disappointed, you know, the fact this was the rating, despite the fact Devitt got an 86 and EC3 with an 80 in ring performance. And only negative was poor announcing, so really a bit disappointed why that flopped as much. We good to see, you know, for once, um, a long matchup isn't affected by EC3's stamina. So good matchup there, happy with that. As I say, as long as we're still gaining pop in every region, I don't really mind what our main events draw. And after the matchup, I'm out of nowhere, Magnus storms to the ring, and, you know, he puts Fergal Devitt through a table. And of course, after him being put through a table in the opening matchup, uh, a B minus 77 here. Magnus performed poorly in this segment. Devitt came across well. At the end of the day, you know what is Magnus's intent uh, from putting Fergo through the champ, through the table. So overall, a few negatives to announce team there. A good strong finish to the show. Uh, we get our popularity increased in the 19 regions with a B minus 77 show. So again, happy with that. It maintains the run we're on. We keep getting good ratings. Um, I think the two guys we've got to praise, Chris and Bram, unfortunately not Chris and Kevin, Chris and Bram uh, both performed really well. But overall, a good performance, that's the main thing, we still have to build superstars up as long as we, well, we build the company up. So it means when we get to national, then hopefully you know these guys can be in a good position to get us even further. Right, that's worrying, because I've always been hurt badly, Liv Morgan. I don't know if she's worth an investment because she's obviously she's really young. She's 22, so there's a. I don't put a bit in for her. She's been very good mother save, so I feel like just someone they can invest in young, and it just um, it can be a good long term signing, and it can help the the knockouts division. And so Tazawa has been hurt badly, so we'll have to look at that. He's going to have to take time off. Obviously, we just get him for pay per views, but still bad. And the show get a lot of praise. As we confirm that Abyss has re-signed, he's got a new three-year paper appearance deal. We have, because he's became available, we have signed Moose. He's going to sign a three-year deal for $1,800 a month. So, 
Good to see some TNA workers around. He'll debut in seven days. And Mysterio has failed a drug test for the third time. Suspended again. Right, so he's just basically going to get jobbed out now. That's too many times he's failed that. Okay, let's have a look then. So Adam Cole has changed his body type. He's now toned. Obviously, we're permanently signed this, so that's cool. Tozawa, the injury is... Can you keep him out for 35 days? That's a month he's going to be out. It's his second injury in quick succession, so that's worrying. But um, hopefully he won't make the next pay-per-view, but should be back for lockdown. It could be a lot worse, so overall, still happy with that. But it's not too bad. A 0 0.39 on pay-per-view and a 0 0.05 on TV. Drug test was 9k and Fergal Devitt doesn't like James Storm. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the pay-per-view went. Obviously, it could have been a bit better. Everything can be. But, continuous momentum, continuous prestige, gets us a bit of money. As, I say, as long as we keep making good profit every month, you know, then we won't get any of the, the TNA financial issues they have in real life. It means we can invest in more people. Uh, maybe look at a second show down the line and, of course, fix these morale issues, which I'll hopefully do. I think because I've made a bit of money, I might look into doing that before our next show. Uh, but now we get a good little break. We've got four weeks until Victory Road, and then it's a six-week break to lockdown. So ten weeks to lockdown. Hopefully build it up as something big. But yes, it's a good pay-per-view. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, what you can do if you did enjoy it, let us know what matchup you thought done really well. What matchup you feel could have done better? Were you surprised wasn't this good? Have you ever accidentally overbooked a match? Like I have. Let me know in the comment section as I say. Let me know how your own saves are getting on. And say if you get any predictions for what we can make in our not just our uh, Victory Road card, but also our Lockdown card. Let me know as well. Uh, of course, always if you want to get involved in the TW hype, you know you can put your stuff up on the Grey Dog Software forums in the Dynasty section and on the Fantasy Booker subreddit. Great place to advertise and to get started, and a lot of bookers there who can give you a hand as well. Uh, basically. What I'm going to do is I'm trying my best to keep up with the schedule. As I say, it's been a bit difficult with the new work uh, department and stuff like that. But hopefully, you know, we can keep this up. Because I'm enjoying TW. I maybe haven't played it as much as I should have recently. Just purely because I've had that, work, FM, and, and a lot of other things. But say, as always, thanks for watching. As I say, any comments are deeply appreciated. As well as likes, shares, and subscription always deeply appreciated. And as I say, just keep enjoying the game, guys. And it's been out for a good wee while now. But, uh with all the updates that people are producing uh, the game will always be fresh so as always thanks for watching guys hopefully see you to the next episode and keep it tight bye bye